Hi there and welcome back to our training series. This is lesson number five. If you've done the first four lessons, then you've graduated from the baby steps of oscilloscopes. In addition to doing those first four lessons, we would highly recommend that you read and or understand the first 12 pages of the tech reference manual, which is described in lesson two. We also feel you should have read and or understand up through page 234 of the Regal document for the OSCOPE. If you don't understand these two documents, you're shortchanging yourself because you're going to be running with the big dogs from now on. And if you don't have the basics, you'll probably end up falling behind. So make sure you skim those two documents up to those pages and make sure you understand the material there. Once you've done that, we're ready to go on with lesson number five. Here we have two signals, one on channel one, one on channel two. They're coming from some unknown source, and this is what usually happens when you first connect up to look at things. It may be a development board. You may not be sure what the things are you should be looking at or maybe something that you expect and you get this type of results and it's very confusing. So the first thing you would do, we always say, is try to do an auto run. So we do an auto run. My scope is asleep again. And auto run comes up with this situation. found a nice square wave on channel 1 but has no idea what's on channel 2. So what we can do is look at the trigger sources and you notice that channel 1 is the trigger source. Well, what's source trigger on channel 2? So if we switch to channel 2 with our source trigger When we find something down here, it's still unrecognizable. So let's mess with our time base. We'll bring our time base up. Looks like there's something in there. Sure enough, there's a waveform here. The waveform's constantly changing. So we've got our work cut out for us. If you really need to see both these signals at the same time, we have to switch to a trigger mode that's called alternate. Up here under trigger, I'll turn this off so make sure it's the menu, you click menu for the trigger mode, click the top gray button, and you will find that there's a term called alternate. So we're going to scroll down and select alternate. And that way what we have is the two waveforms, each on their own part of the oscilloscope. Notice the top part of the oscilloscope is 500 microseconds time base, and the bottom part of the oscilloscope is 2 microseconds time base. So let's, take, let's think about that for a second. Notice there's two trigger indicators. There's a trigger indicator for the channel 2. There's a trigger indicator for channel 1. That means they're independent. So if we go over here and we select channel 2, and we get channel 2 in the window, we come down here, and now we can affect this time base with our time base horizontal position control scale. And you notice, yes, we can. It affects the bottom one, does not affect the top one. We can set trigger levels on the bottom. Let's go back up a little bit. We can set trigger levels on the bottom. Let's set it for 50% mid-scale, and there's the trigger level on the bottom one, and we can move it up, move it up, say, right there. If we switch to channel 1, now channel 1's displaying up here, we can change the time base on channel 1, independent of channel 2. Now channel 1 is using that time base, and once again, we can set the trigger level, mid-range, everybody's happy. 
we can clear the trigger bevel back to zero, the bottom of that signal, and drop down a little bit, make sure there's no noise. Occasionally falling in sync. It is out of sync, it's running random. If you notice, it's trying to follow this waveform down here. It jumps every time this one changes frequency. So this sine wave down here is constantly changing frequency. In fact, we can put the measurement tool on it. Uh, put a measurement tool on it right here. Measure source channel 2. Now we can turn on the measurements. And we can see that the frequency is constantly changing. It's going from 300 and something down to 125. So this top guy really isn't in sync. Notice how the trigger pulse is not with any edge of the square wave. So don't be misled thinking it's in sync just because it's stable. It's quasi-stable. It's not in sync. So if we go up here and we put our trigger level, we're, we've got to go back and select channel 1, make sure we're on channel 1. We select 50%. Then it will in fact go exactly triggered right on the edge and it won't move. So we have two independent horizontal time bases here. And that comes in handy if you want to look at two things that aren't synchronized with one another. Each one could be synchronized independently based on its own channel triggers. Notice how the complexity level of, op of operating this oscilloscope just increased. We now have two channels with two positions, we got two time bases, we've got two trigger systems, so we basically doubled everything in this thing called alternate, it's right up here, it's called the alternate mode of triggering. We will eventually go through all the various trigger modes. As you can see there's quite a few here, some are very specific, that pulse is very interesting makes the scope very powerful. So we will be going through those trigger modes in another lesson. Right now I want you to make sure you understand this lesson because it prepares us for using the math functions which will be in the next lesson. So good luck with your studies.